The Z06 was a code for a track-oriented performance option on the 1963 Corvette. The only way you would even know to order it was through people whispering in people's ears, if you want to go racing, right in the box, you want Z06 option and you'll get all the specialty hardware. It wasn't until the fifth generation that we brought it back and it's become a brand unto itself. You want it to go faster, stop faster, turn faster. Basically, it's the most track-oriented Corvette that we do. Through the fifth, sixth, seventh, and now eighth generation car, we've moved the streetcar and the racer closer and closer together. The development both on the vehicle side and the engine side are tied together at the hip. It's a way to put the best of Corvette together and expand the performance bandwidth. The mid-engine architecture in the eighth generation Corvette allows us to do that even more. In my quest for performance, a Z06 was the car, which is basically a race car for the street and will perform with the best of the best worldwide. It's the first time that I had experienced a Corvette on the road that actually rode and felt like a race car. That precision, to me, that was everything. This is the one that elevates the Corvette brand. Saying that it felt like a supercar doesn't do it justice. <laughs> this thing rips. This keeps you locked in. I know we're having a conversation right now, but I'm still focused here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still focused here the other people that we're competing against that are in a price range that is unique to themselves are going to look back at this as the one that changes how they operate. The heart of the Z06 is the engine. We had mid-engine architecture, which was a big step forward, but we also needed that power. There was a niche following that really pined for the immediate response, the lightweight, visceral feel of a naturally aspirated engine that would exceed the horsepower of the prior generation supercharged Z06. What kind of powertrain would we need to do that? The only way to achieve that is to do the highest horsepower, naturally aspirated V8 that's ever done in automotive history. That's what had to happen.
This is cool. Wait, I gotta look at the engine. <laughs> Oh, this is the mag ride, too. <laughs> I just started. <laughs> Wait, can I start it? An engine of this nature is truly playing in the exotic space. We had our hands really untied to buy the best aluminum forged pistons, titanium connecting rods, to go to the true mechanical valve train. It is a low volume, hand-built precision engine. The big advantages of moving to a flat plane crank is the mass in the engine that's moving the fastest is much lighter. And in doing that allows the engine to accelerate in speed much more rapidly than any small block before it and also achieve more than 650 horsepower, making it the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 engine in a production car. We only do a mid-engine car once. We really looked at um, how to how to get the engine that we really all wanted to have, which was um, a flat plane crank V8. That was what we really wanted to do. Step on it, step on it. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, it rubs so hard! <laughs> this is crazy! Oh my God, it's still going! <laughs> Having a, a C8 steering myself, Z51 package, just to see the RPM go to eight and a half K, I think it's actually 8,600. Yep. This is nuts. Most of us are used to shifting a V8, you know, 65, 6,600 at the, at the highest. The LT6 will rev to 8,600 RPM. From 7,000 to almost 9,000, was a whole different range that not many people get to experience. And it makes power the whole way up. So even when you're up in those higher RPM ranges, you could tell when we stepped into the gas more, you could still feel it pulling. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's just instant. And the thing keeps pulling and pulling, and, and it's all the way to the, the red line, all the way to the red line. Each time you just feel the, the power building and building and building. Uh, to me, it's, it's what it's all about. that speed enables the engine to pump more air, process more fuel, and produce more power. But another part of it is generations of learning how to balance the requirements to make a car fast and comfortable on the track, and also comfortable as an everyday driver. The manufacturing tolerances in this engine are race car tight and that requires a skilled operator and custom shims to make the resulting engine essentially fit net, uh, no gaps anywhere. This engine runs to 8,600 RPM. That's by far the quickest spinning engine we've ever done. And the only way you do that is to have extremely precise manufacturing. You guys good, Harlan? Car six ready. All right, here we go. You know, we're all used to Corvettes with thunder from the gods, V8 sound. My dad has a 62 Corvette, and every time I hear that thing, it's wonderful. Over the course of 70 years now, you know what you're gonna get, and it's this visceral V8 small block experience. So for one, on this car, we don't want to lose that. But for two, on this car, we've got a completely different engine. We wanted to keep the Corvette sound, but also let you know you're in the flat plane crank. Right. One of the first things we noticed with the C8 Z06, boy, the car sounds great outside, but I can't hear anything inside. It's there, but we can't really hear it in the cabin. And you got to be able to hear some of that in the car. It's, it's like, like wow. wow. Right. Yeah, it's a little like, eh. <laughs> so there's still a lot of improvements to, to be had. This is a new chapter. We really needed to move the needle there. And it actually required us to completely rethink the exhaust system. And so we ended up actually tearing up a bunch of the back of the car, completely re-architecting the exhaust, decoupling the tips from the end of the pipe, 
and we shape the tips like a reverse megaphone. So when the sound comes out, that actually reflects off parabolic surfaces, and that projects sound forward to the driver's ear. It was a, a huge challenge, but we wanted that combination of sounds great on the outside and sounds great on the inside, and we wanted it to be real. The big part of this ride is to confirm the sound quality and the sound uh, presence, everything we've been striving for. We have plenty of engineering tools, but for this type of thing, there's a chest cavity pumping thing and just hits you like a brick wall when it drives by. When you get in the car or you stand outside the car and you hear it and it gives you goosebumps, <laughs> that's when you know. <laughs> and this car, this car did that for us. Hang on. <laughs> right there, ma'am. Just gives me goosebumps every time. I think this is the perfect example of blending clinical perfection and also the rawness that the flat plane crank provided. The flat plane crank is a symphony. And hearing the mechanicals work, it's, it's music after so many years. I'm pretty pumped, actually. That was pretty awesome. I have a background in footwear design before I came to GM. There, you're designing around an athlete. Everything that we have here is designed around the motor. We respect our past, but we are always moving forward. We really try to cause the design to look better in a way that the car works better. This new Z06 has basically started with a clean sheet of paper. I admire that because they just taken the most advanced design and updated it each time. It is so advanced and so edgy and beautiful. It's a careful balance of beautiful sculpture and performance metrics. We try to make them transparent to the design itself. This time, we're changing everything but the doors, the roof, and the hatch. It typically starts at the road. Wider wheels and tires, packaging larger diameter brakes more traction, more stopping power, better cornering power. The front and rear fascias, fenders and quarters, all the aerodynamic stuff is different. A big part of the Z06 mission is in its chassis. 
The architecture was designed to put power to the ground like no Z06 before it. 20 inch diameter wheels in the front, and for the first time, 21 inch diameter wheels on the rear. We want to make sure we take full advantage of that weight on the back end, powering off the line to maximize the traction. The fact that we're widening the tires also enables us to create bodywork that feeds right into the engine need to breathe and be cool. We started putting the wider fenders and the wider quarters on it. Then it was like, OK, we got something here. Like prior generations of Z06, we have an available Z07 package. That's for the truly committed track person. You check the box for a Z07, you're getting ceramic brakes, carbon fiber ground effects, you get a carbon fiber wing. An optional carbon fiber wheel that reduces unsprung mass by over 40 pounds. Lighter wheels spin faster naturally. When you hit a bump, you want the suspension to react instantly the lighter the tire and wheel assembly is, the quicker it can do it. And with the optional Z07 package, we've seen a zero to 60 time of 2.6 seconds. We wanted to talk about how we can make this very performance-driven exterior, and how do we take the interior up to another level? When you get into a manufacturing process, to some extent, that becomes very stiff, and there's not a lot of uh, emotion and art and feel to it. How do you bring that human touch? Carbon fiber, it's beautiful because you have this man-made material that's incredibly strong, lightweight, giving you that performance feeling. Then we bring the art into it by the forms that it has, and then hitting it with leather piece floating on top of it. Each one of them were like building a, a small sculpture, and it just blends those two worlds of art and science and craft and quality. You get that understanding that you bought more than just something that's exhilarating and fun, but you also have a full crafted piece that surrounds you. If you take exterior color, interior color, seat belts, calipers, wheels, you could build well over 11,000 different combinations. You can truly build whatever you want and make it bespoke to you. Having something that brings the thrill of driving to everybody in their own unique way has kind of really been the focus in Corvette. Oh my goodness. This is something right here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. 1975, all white Corvette. My, my grandfather used to work on it every day. Every time I go to his house, he'd be in the back. And that was my introduction to cars for real. My dad's a collector now, and now I had the means to be able to collect. So it's part of my family. It's a learning process for me every day. I'm with them. Any conversation, I'm learning something new every time. Yeah. The way we kind of always looked at it is it has to look like it's moving fast when it's sitting still. It's yeah. like traveling down the court, right? 100%. Like it's, it's keeping you in that sight line and moving forward. It keeps you locked in. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That's sick. That's sorry. It's your court vision, right? 100%. Yeah. Right. Every detail matters. Our whole goal is to still be able to capture that thrill of the drive. It should be an experience, man. I, getting out of a car, yeah. <laughs> like you get out there and take a deep breath, your heart's still pumping a little bit. Like, you can't get it too many places in my life. Is that feeling a similar feeling when you're on the court? Yeah, I chase that feeling. My first few years, you're reading the list. Oh, this person's better than that person. I know they say the same thing about cars, and I finally got to a point where I'm just competing against myself. You know, I've seen my career and my performance take tremendous strides just by that headspace alone. At the end of the day, it's how do you build upon yourself to make yourself better? 
we're nearing 70 years with this vehicle. You have that, that feeling of who you are and what your brand is. and also gives you that opportunity to challenge who that is, to make it your own. But as you're doing that, you get to look backwards a little bit to make sure you're making the right decisions with where it goes. I mean, coming from a history of Booker blood that, that played a lot of basketball, starting with my grandfather, moving down a generation to my father. You know, now me, you know, I just want to take it to a whole nother level, man. You know, it kept me going. I'd definitely take this to a track and to a really nice dinner. And if I want to make some, some real noise pulling up, this is what I'm going to be in right here. Coming to the Nürburgring is the ultimate test. You get every single sort of turn, every high speed, low speed, high grip, low grip. It's a long, flowing racetrack, but with many, many challenges. And you really are pushing any road car to the absolute limit. Every sort of load that you could possibly experience anywhere else in the world, you get it all here on one racetrack. It really is the benchmark for the world. So much of the performance of the car started on the racetrack. That's where things are tried because they're stretching the limits and they bring that technology to the road. When you're thinking about a, a supercar, you're thinking about speed, you're thinking about horsepower. And without that, you're nowhere. Good luck. Thank you, Ali. Appreciate that. This car goes so fast so easily, and the ability to just kind of handle the car on this track is pretty unheard of. It's fundamentally a race car that you can drive on the road. That ability to carve the corners, the ability to put that traction down, is all of those feelings that I had from the race car, it's right here in the Z06. General Motors recognized this as an incredible place to come and develop vehicles and to compete with the Europeans, the BMWs, the Mercedes, the Porsches. And if we really want Corvette to compete on the world stage and race on a world stage, then we really have to begin selling cars with right-hand drive. We have to do it for Corvette for the future, period. It's unequivocally a supercar. The Z06 will reward customers that choose to explore its performance limits. And there's nothing more important than that connection with the machine when you're driving something with the performance capability of a Z06. The European competitors have got to be a little nervous. You guys really hit the nail on the head with this. I've always been very proud of the fact that the Corvette is a purely American effort, but I could never have guessed where we would be today. The new Z06 brings that track experience to the everyday enthusiast. If I look at 10-year-old me and say, all right, we're going to build this exotic engine, we're going to have the best tires in the world, biggest brakes that we've ever put on a Corvette, mm -hmm. aerodynamics that are better than anything we've done before, and you can be part of that, that is fulfilling every dream I would have as a young kid. I represent one of hundreds that have put their blood and sweat into this engine. It truly does open the doors of what we can do with a small block V8.
We're only just getting started. The project is like going to the moon. It's a product of a vision, but our team has never done. Z06 is just the next chapter in a very long book. Oh.